Welcome to Up On Game Presents, Keeping Pace With Skill. And now, here again, LeVar Arrington. Bam! Hey, what's up everybody? LeVar Arrington here. Yes, it's another exciting edition of Keeping Pace With Skill, presented by Up On Game Presents. I'm here with my man. I'm, I'm out here in, in Northern VA, Burke, Burke, Virginia. Virginia. Yep. My man, Jim Rafferty. Rafferty. Yeah. Rafferty. Say it with me. All right, so Jim. Yes, sir. You're, you're, you're in charge of the sports and management um, and sales, director of sales here at Glory Days. Glory Days, by the way, people, is an amazing spot to go eat watch the games, enjoy yourself. You know how I know? Because I know about glory days from my days back in Washington, D.C. with 106.7 The Fan. Yeah, that's right. I was here, I was in the market, and I was coming to glory days when I was here. They were gracious enough to support us when I was just getting started in the business, and now here we are full circle. I'm here with you right now, Jim, and let's talk a little bit. Like, let's talk a little bit about Jim first. Now, okay. I hear that Jim was a pretty awesome football player, man. <laughs> well, uh, and, and, and sitting at the table with you, that's kind of humbling, but whatever. And pretty yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. Played at Colgate. Colgate, yep. yep. Played, played some arena ball, went to Europe. Yep. Like, talk about the experience of, of going to Colgate, playing football, and those different things. Well, you're a you're a Penn Stater. I, I visited I Penn. Stater. I visited Penn State. My sister yeah. went to Penn State, where I lived at the time in uh, Mountaintop, Pennsylvania. Nice. Penn State was everybody's number one destination. I visited Penn State, and then I went on a visit to Colgate, and it's 2,500 students up in the mountains. It was snowing that day, and I fell in love with the campus and told the coach that day. I said, you know what? I'm coming here. I'm canceling the rest of my trips and. Played football and baseball at Colgate and graduated from there. Had a tryout with the Redskins. Unfortunately, okay. it didn't work out. Right. Uh, ended up playing arena football for four years. Uh, signed with L.A. in the USFL. All we right. know how that went. Yep. Right? That didn't make it. Um, arena football had an all-star team. We played over in Europe. I got to spend some time in London and Paris. What we position? Over there. I'm, I'm, well, I know arena what football, I'm thinking. In arena football, you got yep. 17 guys on right. the team. So right. I started at corner. I started at wide receiver. I was the third string quarterback and I was the backup kicker. Wow. So you, had, you know, everybody was though. Right. I mean, everybody had to know how to play everything. You had 16 active players on a team. That's awesome. And that, that builds character, Jim. Like, I know you know that. How, how did that play a part in a role in you ending up being a part of such an amazing <coughs> establishment in glory days? I, when I finished playing, I was coaching football at Catholic University and I was bartending to make extra money mm -hmm. at that time in my life to try to figure out what I was going to do. And I, I kind of fell into the restaurant business. You know, I, I, I like to think it was because I was a responsible guy and, and did the right things. The next thing I know, I was managing a place that I started out as bartending. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during that time, I decided the coaching avenue, I didn't want to go down. You know, you guys know what it's like to travel and, you know, you work like when you're getting started, I could have been like the defensive backs coach at Colgate and then maybe Penn State calls and I'm a GA, you know, but you get into a bigger school and then and then you become an AD. I mean, a, a, a defensive coordinator at a small school, but then you go back to a big school to be a defensive back again and you're moving every two, three years. And I just at that point in my life didn't want to do that anymore. So I met, uh, I coincidentally met the founders of Glory Days, Jeff okay. Richard and Bob, yep. as they were building the very first one in 1996. And I just had a good feeling about them, a couple conversations, and I joined them with the opening of this store in April 1996. That's awesome. And uh, I bartended and was a manager for them for the first few months. And then we opened our second store in Woodbridge, and I signed a deal, became a partner, and was the first managing partner in Glory Days history, and I was here for 25 years. That is awesome. Till I just moved on to this new role. They finally talked me into okay. leaving the store and uh, moving into a corporate role. So basically, you paid your dues, yep. you, you, you earned your keep, and you've been rewarded like, Jim, like, take a lesser role, because you're still getting 
uh, a boatload of, yeah, of scratch. I'm, I, I'm not sure it's a lesser role. You okay. know, you got 20, it's a more 21, sto 21 right. stores to deal yeah. with instead yeah. of one or yeah. two or three. It. But it's different. It's fun. It's, you know, it's something new and challenging again instead of doing the same thing for 25 years. And, and but it's you, been a challenge since COVID. So it's been a challenge for the entire restaurant industry. Which, by the way, 96, I was a junior in high school. So you guys have longevity. I'm an old man now. I have, I have juniors in high school now. <laughs> um, the success, you, you mentioned all of the, the stores that you're, you're managing and you're a part of. You guys have continued to expand. How, how have you guys been? So at one point you guys won the, the award for, let me make sure I get this, this right, the Virginia Restaurant Travel, Lodging and Travel Association you guys were named the restaurant this, of the this, year. My store, Burke, was restaurant of the year. This store we are in right now won it. How, how were you able to create that type of environment? How were you able to create that culture here at this store in particular? I, I, for 25 years, I tried to treat every guest that came in this building as my friend. And I tried to teach, I tried to treat everybody how I would treat them if they came to my house. Mm -hmm. And that's how I always looked at it. And that's how I, what I tell other managers. Treat, treat the guests as you would if they were a guest at your house. And, you know, do the right thing by people. You know, uh, uh, be understanding, be open-minded. Uh, we've given a lot of money back to the local sports teams. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, you're here today to mm -hmm. do some of that. Mm -hmm. But the local mm -hmm. youth football, local youth basketball, the, 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 girls, the girls' soccer, the, the boys' soccer, every, every sport you could imagine. We had a, uh, we, we had a, um, there was a school, this was about 10 years ago, and their electronics club was going on a trip. I believe it was down to Richmond, and they came to us and said, what can you do for us? I said, you know what, as far as I'm concerned, that's a sports club too. Why can't we include you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in helping you raise some money to go on your trip? So we've, we've included... Everybody, you know, like I said, electronics clubs, football teams, softball teams, men's adult soccer, you know, they help build the business at 10 o'clock at night, you know, all the different, all the different sports. And we, we've also kept ourselves to be very family friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some sports bars, they're Might looking, not be. They're looking Might be a little for, bit more hardcore. They're looking for a different crowd. Sure. We want, we want mom and dad to be comfortable bringing their kids here mm -hmm. after a game. You're not going to hear F-bombs flying and mm -hmm. people in fights. It's very, very, very family friendly. And that's honestly a hard line to keep between being a sports bar and being family friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've done it. We've got the 21 stores in Virginia and Maryland and 16 in Florida and Tampa. I think that's amazing. And, and to speak to, because that's how I live my life. That's how I went about my career is everyone mattered. Mm -hmm. not, not one person that, that took the time to care about me or what I was doing was ever considered an afterthought. You, you always mattered. And, and so it's a great segue because obviously we're here. It's keeping pace with, with skill and, and pace and skill games. They have that same philosophy. There's that same mentality, that same culture, that same approach is everyone matters. You know, doing business is doing business. Everybody wants to do business, at least who are in the business world, and be successful at doing it. People have different philosophies, different approaches to how they do it, but that philosophy that you just mentioned, being family friendly, giving back to the community, and, and participating in a positive way, um, that's, that's the connection, that's the link. What has your experience been with skill games and how has that played a part in creating that experience here at, at Glory Days? Well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the skills game make money, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fun game. We got lots of folks that like to come in and play and it makes money and it gives us, it gives us the, the ability to have some more money to give back to our local clubs and our local teams. And, you know, that's how, that's how we look at these games. You know, it's, this industry is getting tougher and tougher mm -hmm. with labor and shortages and, and everything. And I don't want to go into that, but you know, every avenue that you can make a little bit of extra money helps you, helps you hire employees, mm -hmm. helps you keep people on, in jobs, hiring managers, and again, taking some of that money and giving it back to the community, to all the sports teams and clubs that we sponsor. There was a time where the games were not 
you weren't able to use them. They were basically taken out. Yep. There was also COVID. Just talk a little bit. Was there, did you see a difference? Did you feel a difference uh, when the games were taken out and when COVID hit? Did, like, what was the impact, if any, because you guys do some amazing work here. What was the impact, if any, at all? COVID was a whole different animal because we, for a while, we weren't even allowed to do anything but carry out. Mm -hmm. So there was no availability of anybody to come and play the games. Mm -hmm. once, once we reopened, we were limited on seating. Um, but, you know, we, we, we saw the lost revenue by not having the games and not just, and, and, and something else, it's not just about money, they're fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're a, fun, the they're, they're a fun game to sit down and play. Sure. And guests would come in and, 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 and you're sitting at, there's a table near you and you're eating a burger and having a beer or drinking a soda and, and playing the game and looking over your shoulder at, oh, what, what NFL game is on today while you're playing your game? It's just part of, it's just part of the experience. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I mean, it took that away from our guests who really like these games. And again, it took money out of our pockets that enabled us to hire, you know, to provide jobs and provide, like it one more time, money back to the community. Money you know? back to the community. That's, it's a great theme. Um, my, my, here's my last question for, for you. What has, what, what has it meant to you in terms of how, how you guys have approached building the culture of, of Glory Days? How does that, how does that play a part in, in your community service and, and how it represents, I guess, this is your microcosm of what's going on out there. So when you think about what Glory Days represents, I guess, I, I guess the, best, the best way of putting it is, what are you most proud of in terms of what you, yourself, and your, your contribution to this, this in particular, what are you most proud of about? I, I, I think Glory Days has made huge impacts in all the communities they've gone into. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a local, you know, we, we got compared to Cheers when we first opened. Nice. You know, you, you come in here at night, 70% of the people know each other's names. The bartenders know everybody's Everybody names. Everybody knows your exactly. name. Exactly. Yeah, your whole place boom, can start boom, singing, boom. right? You just got, and you're always <laughs> glad they <laughs> came. Yeah, who's, who's you want to be where people see. <laughs> All right, so so like cheers. I, yeah. I like it. Look, they got there was participation just now, yeah. as you mentioned. Like I said, you, you asked what I thought about. I think Glory Days as a whole, not just this store, every store that we have is doing things for their community. And me personally, I feel good. I feel good when I go to a youth sports game, even if my kids aren't playing. You know, my boys are 24 and 21 now, but they grew up playing lacrosse and football and basketball and baseball and all the youth all the youth teams that we've supported you know my boys have played on those teams mm -hmm. and so I was a very big part of it I used to help coach the little league I actually coached high school baseball for a little bit at, at Hilton and uh, you know we just give back to the community and you feel when I go to bed at night I feel good about myself I didn't, I didn't just come run a business and make money and put it in my pocket I put it in everybody's pocket. I put it in the servers, the bartenders, the managers, and still had money to give back to the local community. And I feel good about myself when I put my head down at night. That's awesome, Jim. That's awesome. And that's what this is all about, all right? This is what it's all about. It's about community. It's about community service. And hey, if you can't, if you can't generate funds to help the community, then you know, find different ways, but if you can, you should always service your community. I commend you guys for that. During COVID, this is a little piece of what we just said. You know, a lot of places got in a lot of trouble at COVID, during COVID. And we would constantly have guests coming and they, they would tell us, Jim or to anybody on the staff, you've done so much for us over the years, donating to my teams and my kids and you hired my son and my daughter. We're going out of our way to come get food from you as much as we can because we want to support you for everything you've done that's for awesome. us for all those years. So that, 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 was, awesome. that was great too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's Jim Rafferty, everyone. Glory days, you know, men of all trades uh, <laughs> as it applies to glory days and their success. This is, uh, yeah, man, this is amazing. Great, great uh, conversation. And yeah, make sure you guys check out the podcast wherever it is that you get your podcast at, you know, Apple, whatever it may be. Um, this is Keeping Pace with Skill. I'm LeVar Arrington. That's Jim. And uh, yeah, we'll be right back.
That's pretty dope, man. Pretty dope.